right, so first off, I want to apologize. My voice is going to sound pretty terrible. Um, I've got a pretty bad chest and throat cold today. But uh, they just dropped some new Dragon Quest monsters, the Dark Prince, or Dragon Quest Monsters 3 news this morning. Special thanks to my buddy Vector Sater in the Discord for uh, making me aware of this update. The Square Enix official website here posted a bunch of new info on Dragon Quest Monsters, the Dark Prince. Now, this is new info to the West. A lot of this was already revealed in the Japanese trailer, so I'll be showing that as we discuss the, the new news here. So, the story of Dragon Quest Monsters, The Dark Prince. This new adventure follows Sorrow, a name that Dragon Quest fans may remember from Dragon Quest 4, Chapters of the Chosen, although this game is completely standalone, so it doesn't matter if you don't. Poor Sorrow is cursed by his own father, the ruler of the monster realm of Nadiria, and rendered incapable of harming any creature of monster blood. So this makes sense, kind of what we gathered from the trailer. He gets cursed and is not able to attack any monsters, and of course, his dad's army is made up of monsters. This also might uh, tell the story of how Sorrow came to uh, gain the respect of all the monsters that work for him in Dragon Quest IV. And the article continues, In defiance, Sorrow becomes a monster wrangler and soon commands his very own army of loyal monster minions. On his quest for revenge against his father, he meets Rose, a young elvish woman, and a mysterious man who goes by the name of Toil in Trouble. Together they head off to face the perils awaiting them in Nadiria. Okay, so we already know if you've played Dragon Quest IV, Rose is somebody that Sorrow cares about very much, basically his girlfriend or bride-to-be. I don't know if it's going to happen in this game, if it's going to tell the whole story, but basically the humans treat Rose like absolute crap because elves cry ruby tears and they want to make a bunch of money off the ruby tears that she's going to cry. So that's kind of where Sorrow's hatred for humanity and his quest for endless power begins. That's kind of the reason for it. But let's continue. Sorrow's ultimate goal is vengeance, but he'll need to befriend many monsters and tread many dark paths before he's capable of fulfilling that ambition. As you'd expect from a game bearing the Dragon Quest name, this monster wrangling adventure is filled with colorful characters. Let's introduce some of the main players. Obviously, you've got Sorrow. They say he's voiced by Gwillem Lee. Sorrow's the main protagonist of the story. He's a young demi-human whose silver hair and red eyes make him instantly recognizable. He sets out to become a monster wrangler in order to defeat his father, the Master of Monster Kind. And as we know, Sorrow is known as the Master of Monster Kind in Dragon Quest IV and other games, so this is obviously his rise to becoming the master of monster kind and dethroning his father, I would assume. And then, you, of course, you got Rose, voiced by Emma Ballantine. Rose is an invaluable ally to Sorrow, who joins him on his forays into Nadiria and uses her mystical elven powers to reveal the path through this foreboding land. Rose is a gentle, kind-hearted soul, but unafraid to stand up for what she believes in. And then we got the new character, whose name I kind of like. Dragon Quest is known for having, like, a bunch of puns and stuff for their names. And this guy's name is Toil in Trouble, just like the old witch's incantation, uh, Double Double Toil in Trouble. He is voiced by Hoy O'Grady. He looks like an interesting fellow, I, I must say. Uh, he looks like kind of like a bit of a explorer, like a world traveler kind of guy. A young researcher of magic with a self-confessed propensity for five-finger discounts. Toilin joins Sorrow to scour Nadiria for magical ingredients not found in the human world. He's known to get more than a little excitable at the prospect of finding rare items. So that's interesting. So Toilin Trouble is from the human world. How he ended up in Nadiria is beyond me, but then again, Rose was also from the human world, I believe. So obviously there's some... Uh, there's definitely a way to get between the human and demon world. It's obviously not very well known to many people, but Toy in the Trouble looks like he knows a lot of stuff. He looks like he's been around a few times, and uh, he's definitely a thievious kind of guy, which I, I kind of like in my characters. And then we got Fizzy, who is this game's Wadaboo or Waraboo. So Fizzy is voiced by Harriet Carmichael. This cheeky creature has made it her life's mission to seek out the best and brightest monster wranglers of the world. Fizzy becomes something of a mentor to Sorrow and teaches them the basics of monster wrangling. And then it talks about the various different areas of Nadiria. So the various vistas of Nadiria. Much of the story in Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince takes place in Nadiria, an underworld domain where monsters reign supreme. Nadiria is divided into a number of realms called circles, with each one comprised of three separate areas, a lower, middle, and upper echelon. So that makes sense. It would be like this possible seven circles of hell. The demon world is essentially hell in Dragon Quest, so you've got all the different circles of hell there. 
There's the circle of temper, which is fire. The circle of indulgence, which, okay, this makes sense. They could be a play on uh, a bit of the seven deadly sins as well. So indulgence would be like gluttony or something, right? Everything's made out of cakes and desserts and stuff. So it's only revealing two of the circles. There's probably a lot more. I think I've seen, we've seen a lot more in the trailers. A world that changes with the seasons. Even in Adiria, time marches on in the season cycle in familiar fashion. As the seasons change, so too does the landscape and the monsters that inhabit it. A new time of year brings with it fresh discoveries and more monsters to befriend. And it shows kind of the spring, it shows the fall, it shows the winter. It doesn't show the summer, but I think we've seen enough of the summer in the trailers and stuff. Meet the monsters. Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince is the newest game in the Dragon Quest Monsters series. As tradition dictates, the main character is adept at forming powerful bonds with the monsters they meet. These monster allies will join the hero on their adventure, fighting in their stead against the enemies they encounter. In that sense, this game is no different, but unlike his predecessors, Sorrow is under the influence of a curse, placed upon him by his father, the ruler of Nadiria. As a result, he's unable to harm any creature of monster blood himself. Sorrow resolves to become a monster wrangler, training up his team of monsters, creating new ones through the power of synthesis. Synthesis isn't a new thing, really. Even, like, the monster breeding back in, like, the original Dragon Quest 1 is very similar to synthesis. The big difference here is, like the Joker series, it looks like your skill trees and stuff. You can choose which skill trees carry over to your new monster, and I imagine uh, you can also see what monster is going to be created when you synthesize, which you couldn't do as far as I remember on the original Dragon Quest monsters. With over 500 types of monster and a revamped synthesis system, there are brand new monster combinations to discover and many familiar friends and arch enemies from other titles in the Dragon Quest series to create. There is a screenshot here showing the Dragon Lord and Zoma, the final bosses of Dragon Quests 1 and 3, so kind of continues with what the other Dragon Quest monsters games do. If you're willing to put the time and effort in, you can get the uh, bosses from previous Dragon Quest games, which is always awesome. It's always a treat. And with the game's online capabilities, you can now do battle with Monster Wranglers the world over. Okay, so that's really cool. You're gonna be able to battle your monster team with your friends' monster teams and all that. But let's introduce a few of the monsters who will make their first appearance in Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince. Now, I'm going to show you the pictures of these. Um, some of them were shown in the trailers and some were not. We've got Gumulonimbus, who is uh, like a storm cloud looking thing with slimes. These sneaky slimes summon thunderstorms and gales from the comfort of their cloud. You've got Vigandragora, a uh, play on like Mandragora. This dragon maintains a symbiotic relationship with the flower that sprouts from his head. So it's like a nature and dragon kind of type uh, monster, which looks kind of doofy, but kind of cute. And then you've got my favorite new monster. This guy looks badass. Ronin Raccoon. Look at this guy, man. He looks awesome. He kind of reminds me of the Bop and Badgers from uh, Dragon Quest IX, whereas if you checked my top 11 Dragon Quest monsters video, he was, uh, I think he was an honorable mention or probably my second favorite monster or favorite even from Dragon Quest IX. This monster peers deep into the psyche of its foes to determine how best to strike them down. I really love that, uh, the look of that guy. Then we've got some release date DLC. So we're gonna go into some of the details of the confirmed day one DLC or uh, day one edition bonuses. And in a minute, I'm gonna get to the Japanese pre-order bonuses. So these day one DLC bonuses that it, the uh, official North American Square Enix website is talking talking about here. These were already announced on the Japanese website. So three sets of DLC will go on sale to coincide with the release of the main game. The Mole Hole, Coach Joe's Dungeon Gym, and Treasure Trunks. Progress through this additional content to earn rewards that'll help you on your quest, as well as new outfits for Sorrow to wear. Content will be available to purchase from the Nintendo eShop on Nintendo Switch. So I don't really like that it's available to purchase, because all the other Dragon Quest games, if you have Day 1 DLC, it's always been like a part of like if you bought the game on Day 1, or if you pre-ordered the game digitally, it was uh, free. So they haven't set a price point, so maybe it still is free, I hope it is hopefully it's free uh it would be kind of crappy if you had to pay for this uh but the first one is the mole hole so it shows don mole from uh dragon quest 8 i believe it was uh when you fought don mole you also fight him in i think that the first time you actually fight him is in uh i want to say dragon quest monsters 2 
Delve underground for a reunion with monster types you befriended once before. You'll also have opportunity to scout monsters that are otherwise very tricky to synthesize. This deal see includes the gothic vestment outfit so this is the uh, gothic vestment costume this what this one is for the mole hole i believe is so that you can continue to recruit monsters you've already recruited which is going to be super handy because a lot of times you'll catch a monster and you'll want to synthesize into something but you'll see a bunch of different monsters that you'll want to synthesize into but you only have one of that monster so you'll kind of pick your favorite out of the list now you'll be able to easily recruit monsters that you had already recruited so you don't have to worry about not being able to synthesize all those different monsters that you could have possibly synthesized from that monster next up is coach joe's dungeon gym that is really hard to say fast so coach joe is like a shrimp looking dude explore these randomly generated dungeons and battle legions of powerful monsters. Each dungeon comes with unique requirements that require players to carefully assess and construct their party. Dispatch the boss that awaits in the final room to earn rare items that will aid you in raising ever stronger allies. This looks like a bunch of bonus dungeons and stuff that are going to give you some good items to uh, help you taming and raising more monsters. Um, it kind of feels like a throwback to Dragon Quest Monsters 1 with the randomly generated dungeons. And then right here is the Cake Maker's Cobbler outfit that comes with Coach Joe's Dungeon Gym. This one looks a little silly. I don't think, uh... I don't think this one's gonna be a real priority for anyone to get. And then you've got Treasure Trunks, who is uh, hosted by uh, Mickey the Mimic here. Every time you open these mysterious treasure chests, you'll obtain an exciting reward. However, you'll have to wait a little while before you can open the chest up again and obtain the next exciting reward on the list. Keep opening them and you're guaranteed to get your hands on some very exciting items indeed. So I'm not sure what this one is. It looks just like a daily thing you can go into every day and like open up a new treasure. I'm not too sure. This one doesn't look too great. And then we got the uh, Monstrous Mail outfit that comes with the Treasure Trunks uh, DLC. This one looks pretty cool to me. So that was everything they talked about in the North American Square Enix website update. So let's take a look at the Japanese pre-order bonuses now. These were released at least on June 23rd was when I originally posted this on our Facebook group. The Japanese store is showing the following pre-ordered items. So there's the Wadaboo pillow. It's about 40 centimeters tall. And then you get like this... Dragon Quest Monsters blanket that shows a bunch of the different Dragon Quest monsters on it. I don't know if it's a blanket or just one of those little like glasses cleaner style sheets that you sometimes get when you pre-order games. And then you've got the uh, red gothic jacket costume with a warrior's ring and extra sirloin. The warrior's ring, if anything, is probably going to boost the attack of your monsters, just like it boosts your attack in Dragon Quest 1. The sirloin, if you haven't played the Dragon Quest Monsters games, sirloin and beef jerky and ribs and all that stuff is used to improve your odds of scouting new monsters. You kind of give it to them while you're in battle with them, and it improves their odds of wanting to join your party. It's kind of cool. Um, I hope we get a pre-order, a physical pre-order, that has extra content for us in the West, but at this moment, I do not know. None of these have been said to be available in the West yet, but I'll keep you posted if any more information comes out. Stay tuned to the channel. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all so you don't miss the next video. I got some great top 10 JRPG and Dragon Quest content on the way for you. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to leave you guys with this interview with Yuji Hori talking about the future of Dragon Quest Monsters. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video.